Hey guys, this is the original Josh with Kronza USA, Pressure Washer Perfection, and we're answering some questions that we've gotten from, uh, from customers recently, and one that we received was, uh, what would cause the pressure washer to not permit water to exit the pump, even though we're feeding it with a garden hose? So if we're feeding it with a garden hose and no water's coming out, what would cause that? So if we're feeding water into the pump and nothing's coming out, we're force feeding it to this inlet side, then obviously our first stop is going to be the strainer at the inlet. <clears throat> Pretty cut and dry. You guys have seen it before. We take needle nose pliers, pull out the strainer, make sure that it's clear. For the sake of diagnosing it further, if you're, you know, if you've already checked this and it's clear and we're digging deeper, you can leave this out for the time being. Um, after we feed water into the inlet, the first place it's going to enter is the lower uh, end of the pump, which is your low pressure check valves or your intake check valves. So first thing I'm going to do is remove all three check valve plugs and remove all three of the, the low pressure check valves and inspect each one. I'm going to take and press the center check valve plate and make sure it's actuating. And uh, then I will remove the three O-rings so that they don't get lost, set them aside. Then I will force feed water in just to make sure that it will exit through this lower chamber. And I mean, it should be pretty evident. Once you take these out, you may be able to see daylight through the inlet. Um, however, if there is something clogging it, running water through it will help push that blockage out of the way. Once we've removed those and inspected it, I'm gonna, I would recommend just setting them aside and um, for a moment. Go ahead and remove your pressure gauge. Anytime you're doing check valve work on your uh, Krenzel pump, if it has the, the gauge mounted on the valve housing, this should come off first. So you'll unscrew that from the actual valve plug. They're two separate pieces. So then you'll use uh, 14 millimeter to remove the, the gauge, 22 millimeter to remove this valve plug, and then 13 millimeters for these side ones. If you're gonna remove the gauge, then the center one, and then both the sides. Once you take those out, uh, plugs out, you'll remove those three check valves just like the, the first two, or the first three. Check those valve plates as well. Look for any debris inside the housing. Dig out your O-rings. Uh, once again, flush some water. Once those things are out, if these are still open, you should, still, you should be able to see daylight straight through. So now we've done a full inspection. We don't see any crap inside the pump. Start on the bottom, put in your O-rings first, followed by your check valves, reinstall the caps, then come up top, do the same, O-rings first, then your three check valves, then the two outer check valve caps, then the center one, and then reinstall your gauge. At that point, force feed it water yet again, see if it exits the pump. If it does not exit the pump at this point, the the discharge part of the pump has a check valve built into it that's part of the unloader valve. It is not one of your six check valves, but it is technically a check valve. To, to um, inspect it, you'll remove the brass hex fitting that's directly adjacent to this part of the casting. You can see this one, we have uh, an adapter going directly to quick disconnect. On the 1322 that you see here, you have the 22 millimeter threaded fitting, same on both. Then on the 1122, it's a flat fitting located in the same place, but you'll take that uh, fitting out. Beneath that, you'll see the spring and uh, ball bearing. <clears throat> if you're not getting any water coming through at this point, when you remove this fitting and the spring comes out, most likely that ball bearing is gonna be stuck against the seat that's up inside there and just for whatever reason kind of seized against it. If it's been blocked up to that point, um, it's very odd for it to happen, but you should just be able to pop that ball off the seat, flush the water through it, put it all back together, and it should work just fine. So if this doesn't seem to clear up the problem that you're specifically having with your pressure washer, please leave a comment in the notes below. You can also reach out to our office, but uh, we'll do our best to figure it out, but it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of places for water to go inside this housing. So if, if you're not getting water out, it's almost always one of the check valves is stuck or there's a clog in there that you just haven't found yet. So thank you for joining me. This is the original Josh with Kronza USA, pressure washer perfection. Kronza. 
USA. Pressure washer perfection.